On this episode of the Leader of Wrestle Zone, we're going to talk about this week's Wednesday Night War with AEW Dynamite and NXT. Both shows had interesting stories, interesting formats, and the continuation with NXT's uh, interim Cruiserweight Championship. So, let's get started with another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Everybody, welcome to the Leader Wrestle Zone. So I'm J Rod here, your host. Uh, this is the Leader Wrestle Zone. We talk about all things professional wrestling, such as AEW, NXT, New Japan, and all forms of promotions, wrestling matches, all type of discussions that we do in this channel. So this episode is the Re Wednesday Night War, as we've been following. Now, I know some of you guys are getting a little fed up that I've been talking more about who won the views, but let's talk about the views a little bit and the ratings sometimes it's important to understand why these ratings is because right now many of the WWE fans believe AEW is no good that they will never be good as um, WWE maybe that's true but AEW has been making their word that they want to be as an alternative promotion away what WWE has done and they have done that so far and many of these views and ratings they've been conducting played an important role because it proves AEW has been keeping their bar the end of their bargain with everything that's been happening in this whole since the launch of AEW since the first four pay-per-views the start of AEW Dynamite Dark all of it but Dark doesn't play any role in that but the Wednesday Night War with Dynamite and NXT plays an important role because once this whole thing with Dynamite came into fruition, uh, WWE tried to, how to say, um, derail them, try to convince fans, don't look at these guys. But I have to say both shows are good. They have good stories, good matches, and that's why I keep re reviewing the views and ratings. But this week, um, for a second week in a row already, AW won the viewership, so they gained about... 732,000 views with the rate of 0.28, which is not bad. Better than last week, um, maybe because of the matches they conducted. So we'll get to that in a bit. And then we had NXT. They gained the views of 663,000 with the rate of 0.18. Now, it's okay that this has happened. But it's proved that a lot of, there's still people are paying attention to AEW, even though it's been said by many people before. Some people watch both shows, they DVR one and they watch one the other, you know, however it goes. Me, I just DVR both and I watch them later, see how it goes. So, uh, let's get started with AEW Dynamite. So it started out with the recap of last week of what happened. So we all know there were two matches that are part of the semifinals of the TNT Championship Tournament that took place and all this and that. So that was a bit of the recap that happened, of course. If you guys saw it, it's the last match was brutal how it turned out. So let's start with the first match of the night. We had uh, Joey Janela versus Cody. Uh, no Brandy on this one. So, um... It was a good match. There were some good um, pieces that went through the match. I enjoyed it. It was great. And for all of you who don't know, if you guys are fans of Joey Janela, uh, Joey Janela has been now deciding that he needs to step away from doing the hardcore stuff and prove himself more that he can do something different away what he was known for in GCW. But he still has strong relations with GCW. Um, that He still does the he wanted to do the spring break event that was supposed to take place at a WrestleMania week, but it didn't happen. But I'm glad I got to see him again. We haven't seen him since the start of the stay-home policy, and now AEW started back doing their 
normal sh bigger shows um, down at Daly's Place while they were doing the others at Norcross, Georgia, where QT Marshall is teaching there. But the match was great. I enjoyed it. I know that um, the best part is that Cody's doing every move uh, back and forth what he was going to do. So it was great. I enjoyed it. And of course, <coughs> of course, Sean Spears still has um, deep issues with Cody for losing the match against him during the start of the tournament. But looks like the rivalry between them is far from over. I have that feeling it's going to happen. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> Uh, the next thing we see, it started out with an interview with Nala Rose, but she has no time for that. So she's, um, this match was supposed to be like a squash match, but they had an uh, interesting wrestler named uh, Kenzie Page. I'm assuming either she's part of the training with QT Marshall at the Nightmare, Fac <coughs> at the Nightmare Factory, but who knows. But it did, we haven't seen Nala Rose since, um, before the start of the whole pandemic, but it's great to see her again. You know, I know she's played a strong role as the AEW Women's Championship. And, of course, she ate the defeated Kenzie um, Page. But there's still the word who is going to be facing her for the title. It's either Hikaru Shida, Chris uh, Satlander, Big Swole, uh, Britt Baker... Could be a lot. She claims that she's a role model. She's a true leader of the women's division. But Nyla doesn't believe that because she's currently holding the title. So I uh, don't know. We just got to wait and see who will be stepping up to obtain the title. Then uh, MJF is back, of course. He said that he is determined to come back. But he will be in action the following week. Uh, still unclear who he's going to wrestle, but it was later confirmed that he's going to wrestle at Double or Nothing against Jungle Boy. That's going to be a fun match. Um, and then we see this whole thing with Sean Spears, how he thinks Cody is arrogant, a uh, selfish prick for allowing Dusty Dustin to continue on with his match against Lance Archer and Cody being a, a brother tried to tell him that he doesn't need to do this but Dustin wanted it that way this kind of thing reminds me of that movie um, like I said a lot the previous Wednesday Night War um, episode where the kickboxer movie with John claude Van Damme where um, Kirk Sloan was trying to tell his brother Eric that he needs to stop this that he's not going to win it and that kind of reminds me of the whole story because it makes a good story. I don't know if they got that from the movie or, or what, but it played a good story. But he thinks that, believes that Dustin Rose's career is over. He said that he would never do what Cody did. He would have just immediately thrown in the towel. Now, Cody knows his own brother. Now, he knows that he's not going to win, but he's asking him as brother to brother. He doesn't need to do this. But Dustin is the older. He needs to make... He wants to do this. And, but we'll see what happens. Um, and then we see uh, a non-title match between John Moxley and Frank Kazarian. This was the first time since January of 2019 where Frank Kazarian is in a match in a singles competition. We haven't seen him do that in a while. And it was a good match. Great. Uh, there were some great spots. I did like where... Um, Frankie super kicked um, Moxley in midair while outside the ring, and that was good, and it was great. I enjoyed it. Um, but of course, um, Moxley won the match, but out of nowhere, here comes um, the Dark Order, a seven-on-one attack against Moxley, and then here comes SU members Scorpio Sky and uh, Christopher Nels, who they still have a bit of a bone to pick with these guys for what they did the last time if you recall they were trying to recruit Daniels believing he's one of them they even try to convince SCU that he's one of them now and you know the whole story Brody Lee decided to tell him that he has something that he wants 
and what he wants is the title. And of course, Moxley being the the wise ass or smart ass as people would say, he said, dude, all you need to do is ask. And of course, Brody wanted to make a statement saying that he earns that title, that he deserves it, he needs it. So he took the st- title hostage. And it's later been confirmed that Brody Lee and John Moxley will face each other at Double or Nothing for the AEW title. Now, this is another talk that's been happening. Um, people are starting to remember. If, if you guys remember this uh, with WWE, <coughs> it's the same kind of thing that happened with Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. And then we don't know how this is going to go. But I'm assuming they could go with a different direction. Now, do people say, is this, if Moxley loses title and they pass on the title to Brody, it, what does that mean? We don't know. I mean, I know that he wanted to go up the ranks, but it didn't happen that way. And if Moxley beats Brody, it'll, it'll be there'll be some disappointing fans, so... We need to understand how is AW going to protect both wrestlers from this backlash because that's the last thing they need. You know, they don't want to be the next WWE that does the stupidest mistakes as we've seen with WWE in recent months and years. But we all, all we can do is wait and see what's going to happen. Uh, then we see um, Brandy Rose do a little video uh, production where. She had something to say to Jake the Snake Roberts and Les Archer. Like, she's getting tired of the whole thing with Jake calling him Caesar. He's not Caesar. And he keeps playing these mind games. And, of course, all this and that was going down. She had enough of them. And she's not afraid to back away. Not afraid to stand up in front of Jake. So, she wanted to see what he's going to do. Is he going to be dumb enough to hit her we'll just wait and see then we jump in with the match between QT Marshall alongside with Brandy versus Lance Archer alongside Jake now this one was a brutal match we all know what kind of person Lance Archer is how he beats up his opponents but and there was a moment where Britt Baker used her shoe against QT Marshall and Brandy grabbed it and tossed it Brandy didn't like it so she took out uh, Britt Baker didn't like that so she took out Brandy but Lance Archer won the match and then when it all happened Jake the Snake Robert a sick individual who did the same thing with many other wrestlers in the past he put a snake on her her. and we don't know how this retaliation is going to go but I have a feeling Brandy is going to go get her revenge against Britt Baker for getting involved in a match that didn't concern her and Cody is going to give a piece of Jake Roberts' mind for putting a snake on her. Uh, hopefully, R. Anderson comes back because he needs him to watch his back, see what Jake the Snake is going to think in his head. Because since now we're seeing wrestlers like Sean Spears, um, Taz Tully, we've seen um, Jake now with Lance Archer, R. Anderson with, um, with Cody. So we just got to see that. Um... What else we see? Oh yeah, then there was an interview with Darby Allen. He's still trying to take in the loss of what happened last week. Where people say that match should have been Darby. But apparently Darby's shoulders were already pinned down. Cody's shoulder was not. And Taz offered to help him out. But looks like he was not interested. But if you are accepting help from a guy like Taz, you take it. Then we have the main event between... um, the street fight between the sex gods, members of the inner circle, Jericho and Guevara versus Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy. Now, this was a fun match. I enjoyed it. Um, the moment all this happened, Kager was there too. And <laughs> they took out Matt first and they took him to the, Jericho took him to the back while all this thing was happening with Kenny in the front. And all of a sudden, here comes Matt. Dressed up as the Hardy Boys gimmick, if you all remember that look that he had back back in the day. And he kind of transformed in different p- 
people. And I, I'm like thinking, wow, that's pretty cool. And then during the commercial break, they went all the way to the back, taking the fight there. Um, of course, Hager was still trying to make sure that Jer Jericho and Guevara won. And that's what happens. Now, um, all of a sudden, they put Matt Hardy in a... While they were taking out Jer um, Omega. But all of a sudden, here comes Damascus. The other um, essence of Matt Hardy. And he got into the golf cart and he tells, you should document this. And he he ran over Jericho and then he got to Kenny and then they run over a Guevara. And I thought that was a classic moment in in this match. Now, the match seems like they, they were it was going in the favor of Matt Hardy and Kenny. They, uh, Kenny took out Hagar and Jericho. But all of a sudden, here comes the Pitbulls. Um... Santana Ortiz sneak up from behind to ensure they won the number games. And, of course, they won the match. But that's how it ended. And, of course, they did that whole taking out the finger. But this is how I'm going to see. I have the distinct feeling that they're going to resume the Bloods and Guts match at some point. Maybe double or nothing. I don't know if you guys would... If, if that could be possible. Cody's going to be preoccupied <laughs> with Lance Archer at double or nothing. And here comes the return of the Young Bucks. It's going to be in Bloods and Guts. Kenny Omega. Matt Hardy. The Young Bucks. And Hangman Adam Page. That completes the set. And that will lead to who is the dominant. The Elite or the Inner Circle. And that's going to be an interesting match to watch. Uh, so if you guys like AW please click like and if you guys see there's if you guys do agree with me with certain aftermath that could take place the following weeks leave a comment down below so let's move on with NXT so let's talk about NXT this week's NXT has some interesting stories it opened up with um, Johnny Gargano versus Dominic Dijakovic now a week ago Dijakovic had a problem with Gargano. Gargano is now saying that NXT will be reborn under his image alongside him and Candice. Um, Dominic believes that what they're doing is disrespecting the NXT. He thinks that Gargano thinks that he's a good guy who's been wrong a couple of times. He, he doesn't understand why the fans support Tommaso Ciampa. What he's trying to do is right but no one listens. He always put other people first other than themselves and he thinks that He's going to run the whole show. Dijakovic tried to beat him with his size, but uh, of course, Candice was around showing up trying to ensure. But sooner or later, their power couple is going to go into war. I have a feeling who will step up. But it was a good match. I have to say it was interesting to see Dijakovic, a man of his size, how he can handle the match. But frankly, Gargano won that match. And then we go into a... Um, in a little video package of the Imperium's Eichner and Bartel. Now, last week they attacked Tat, Thatcher and Riddle because they felt like what they were doing last week, doing that whole game show, is a sign of disrespect to the sport of wrestling. These guys take it too serious because they believe wrestling is should be an, is honorable. It's a holy ground. They must respect it. If you don't respect it, you get your ass beat. That's what they believe. And they want a challenge for the NXT Tag Team Champions to prove the Imperium will always be the dominant force. But we'll get into what Mad Riddle and Ta uh, Timothy Thatcher had to say. <coughs> oh, ooh. And then we jump in with uh, Group B of the Interim NXT Cruiserweight Champions. This one was an interesting match. It was Akira Tozawa versus Gentleman Jack Gallagher. Now this match was good. I enjoyed it because you have a Japanese wrestler and a British facing off. Now, just to be fair or be honest with all of you, I was kind of rooting for Akira Tozawa. A, he had been cruiserweight before, and B, um, I know he's been trying to get his hands on that title for quite some time, but I can't wait to see him. Um, I didn't know about his previous background, but I enjoyed that he was part of Dragon Gate. But of course, the match ended with him winning um, the match, 
and this indication right here where he is now 2-0. Basically, he is undefeated in the tournament in his group. So it's great to see that, that he is now moving on. He's already separate, and he's getting close to hopefully to the finals. I'm kind of rooting for him to make it to the finals for that. Then we have a women's match between Zia Lee and Chelsea Green, along with that pencil neck moron, Robert Stone. It was a, it was starting out good, but all of a sudden, Aaliyah shows up and cost her the match. Basically, the rivalry between those two is just getting started. Robert Stone kind of appreciated her help because I don't know if he will take her to his brand. If you'll recall, Zia Lee broke her nose and she cost... Um, Zaylee was <coughs> attacked from behind and took her out from the tournament. So this is now becoming a new robbery. This is far from over between those two. So we'll see where it goes from there. Mm, what else? Yeah. And then we see a little video, a little um, thing with Dream Velveteen Dream that he is coming for the title. That it's gonna be a dream come true. That type of thing. But. We'll just get to that. That's the main event for the for that night. And then we see a little video package between Ayo Shirai and Charlotte Flair. Uh, as you all recall, um, Ayo Shirai has been trying to get her hands on a title for a long time. She had a couple of opportunities, but she met, uh, was close. Charlotte Flair won that title in WrestleMania against um, Rhea Ripley. But that's later on for tonight. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we had um, backstage where Matt Riddle and Thatcher were reacting to what happened last week. Where Imperium are issuing the challenge for those titles. Now, Riddle's off for it. But he cannot speak on behalf of himself. He wanted to know, what does Thatcher think? So he said, you punch, I make them tap. So basically, they're going to face them next week. So the NXT titles are on the line. Now, uh, the next thing we have is the women NXT Women's Championship between Charlotte Flair and Ash Right Now, uh, Charlotte Flair has been trying to prove that she's dominant uh, in every form. And of course, wants to know what makes the NXT Women's Division special. But frankly, she won that match in a way it did but she wanted to destroy Ayo Shirai, take her out completely like break her knee the same way she did with Rhea Ripley at Wrestlemania now when she was about to do this Rhea Ripley shows up stopping her Ayo Shirai shows up all goes off pissed off saying stuff in Japanese Rhea Ripley doesn't want no piece of her but she should be thanking her that she that she nearly put her out of commission. Problem is, Ayo Shirai forgot. She lost the match, and now that Real Ripley is coming for the title, that could be so. So I don't know if somewhere down the line there's going to be a triple threat match between Ayo Shirai and Real Ripley. We just got to wait and see where they're going to go with it. And then we see the Group A of the Interim NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Kushida versus Jake Atlas. So both of them had each... One win. Um, it was a good match. I'm not gonna lie. <coughs> gonna lie. Um, I'm a fan of Kushida. If you all recall him from New Japan, Jake Atlas. I've been hearing great things about him throughout the independent scenes, and I didn't even realize that he was on the Undercover Boss episode with Stephanie McMahon. But it was great. But I like how the thing ended where Kushida put him in the armbar. And he won through that. And of course, we all know Kushida has been in many tournaments involving the junior heavyweight division. So that makes him 2-0 and as well in the tournament. Now, I could be biased on this or just wishful thinking, however you think I'm saying this. But I would love to see in the finals. I don't know if you guys would like this. Akira Tozawa versus Kushida. Two Japanese wrestlers facing off. I feel like this is the match 
that could be recognizable. If you all recall, not a lot of the Japanese wrestlers have been recognizable, especially for Hideo Hitomi, who was known as he was known as Kenta. He didn't get the the kind of recognition he deserved because he was an international star. But I would love to see that happen. So right now, these two men are currently in the lead in their in their groups. Kushida two wins. Hakira Ishida two wins. So each of them are already ahead of everyone. So right now for the tournament, we got Jake Gallagher in group B, who's in the bottom. Um, Tony Nese in the bottom of group A. So that leads um, Isaiah Swerve Scott, Hijo de Fantasmo, each a win and a loss. Uh, Drake Maverick, and I forgot who else in it. Uh, Drake. Oh, yeah, Jake Atlas, too. So each of them have a win and a loss. So we have four competitors that each have a win and a loss, so we don't know where they're going to go with it. But it's going to be interesting where they're going to go with uh, with the tournament. So we're going to stay tuned to that. Um, then we had a Finn Balor shows up. It's still unclear who um, attacked him from behind, but my money is on Imperium because they're following orders from Walter. Uh, they still haven't gone with, but I'm assuming maybe it's someone else. Uh, it's either a Karrion Cross. I'm not sure. But that would be interesting. Oh, shit. I, met, I missed the match. Uh, there was the in-ring in debut of Karrion Cross, or as you all know, Killer Cross, along with Scarlett versus Leon Robb. Now, this one was a squash match. It did prove, I'm like thinking, are they going to put them in a power couple story against Gargano and Larray? That would be interesting. I would love to see, Gargano was going to say that he is the true leader of NXT, the true face. But, what does Karrion think, Karrion Cross thinks? That he is a dreamer, that he thinks full of himself, who knows? And I have a feeling that it's going to be a big battle. We'll get to that. Then we had a match between Cameron Grimes and this guy named Denzel. Now, this match didn't take long. Um, Cameron won. Now, he did the most stupidest thing ever in his post-match. He's talking about how he would have loved to slap Finn Balor, but Balor did not like that out of him. So basically, he thought that Balor wasn't going to listen, but he did. He came into his face and he wanted... Don't know what if that's what he thinks. Basically, Cameron Grimes should have learned how to keep his mouth shut, but he didn't. And that makes a good storyline. We'll just see what's gonna happen. Um. Then we jump in with the main event, the NXT Championship, Velveteen Dream versus Adam Cole. Now this match was great. I enjoyed every moment. Like every time you, you can see, you know, Adam Cole is gonna try to win because he uses. Undisputed Era, Strong, and Fish. While they were coming out to help out their leader, here comes Dexter Loomis out of nowhere. That is the most creepiest thing. First attack match, and now this. I don't know what is this about, but it was great how it turns out. But Dexter Loomis tossed Roderick Strong right in front of the ref and knocked out. Valveteen Dream was so close in winning that match, but it didn't go his way. Uh, he got super kicked by Adam Cole and gave the, that one move with the knee. But I have that feeling <coughs> when the match was over that this is far from over between Dream and Cole. Now Cole thinks in his mind he does he lost he doesn't get another shot. But of course you know that that Willem Regal does not like the undisputed era. He'll do whatever it takes to ensure that Adam Cole loses. He's trying to maintain the title so the prophecy continues that hopefully. O'Reilly and Fish can regain the tag team titles and as for Strong uh, can regain the North American title. So that's what happened for NXT. So do I think both shows were good? I say yes. But uh, I'm not sure if the Street Fight match was the one that created more of the buzz for a lot of fans. But it was great. I enjoyed it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the of the Wednesday Night War. So, I must bid all of you adieu. Stay safe. Wash your hands. I bid you all. 
goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.